Welcome everybody to the latest uh, pandemic recovery from the West Orange County's uh, virtual town hall series. Uh, we thank you for joining us today. In these uh, meetings, we have the opportunity to uh, speak with uh, elected officials about uh, items that are critically important to our residents. And today we have uh, Supervisor Katrina Foley from the second uh, district. We also have with us today uh, as co-host uh, Mark Cherko, who's the mayor of the city of Los Alamitos. So uh, Supervisor Foley, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we greatly appreciate your time and we look forward to the discussion we're gonna have. Thank you. Well, it's great to be here. I really appreciate you all including me in this COVID update. And we have a little bit of an update uh, about the district and then I know there's gonna be some Q and A um, and I look forward to um, helping to share some information with the community. So Avery Counts, who's our constituent services team, is going to be helping me. Avery, you can go ahead and start the slides. Avery, entonces puedes empezar las diapositivas, entonces. Okay, so we have, uh, we're entonces, representing District estamos 2. Estamos representando and Cyprus el, el, and uh, el de Cyprus Los Alamitos, de Orange, city, La uh, par parts of the cities of Buena Park uh, parte... uh, and Fountain Valley, as well as Seal Beach, Stanton, Huntington Beach, Newport Beach, and Costa Mesa are all in our district. And so you can go to the next slide. We've been really busy getting to work with um, getting out and touring the community, helping uh, cut ribbons for amazing programs like the Moby Mat in Huntington Beach, which we're hoping to bring to Seal Beach soon. Um, and also really working on our workforce development programs. Next slide. So we have an initiative that is to help employers connect with employees and get, uh, get staffing. I've been meeting with uh, employers, especially in the restaurant hospitality industry, and they're really struggling to find staffing. And so we're trying to create this virtual fair opportunity. It's June 23rd. If you are an employer and you wanna participate, please do email us and let us know. We'd love to have you. And if you're an employee and you're looking for a job, please join as well. We'll have a lot of different employers from all kinds of industry available to work with you. You can have in-person on Zoom uh, chats uh, and, uh, talk to employers directly that day on June 23rd. Additionally, I'm really excited about a program that we're working with our, um, our workforce development team here and our veteran services team here at the county, and that is a hire a veteran program. My brother is an Army veteran uh, on a medical disability, and he uh, would benefit from a program like this. I'm such an advocate for supporting our veterans. And so as an employer, it's a win-win. You can hire a veteran who sacrificed and served for our country and the county through a workforce development funds from the state and federal government will pay for the wages for that veteran. So hoping you can help us spread the word about this amazing program. It's very important to me that we help not only our local businesses find employees, but we help our veterans also for stability. Um, and I'll be talking a lot with all the chambers about our workforce development initiatives to try to help the local businesses right here in Orange County in District 2 to understand the procurement opportunities with the county. There's lots of contracts you can have. Our flags right here that we have were paid for, uh, not paid for, but purchased from a Newport Beach local business instead of ordering them out of the catalog from some other state. And we also buy all of our supplies for District 2 from local businesses. We're really trying to take our taxpayer dollars that are coming into the county and reinvesting them right back into our local economy. So help us, help you, give us all of your local businesses and we're here to serve. Next slide. Our vaccine update. Uh, since I got here, all we've been doing every single day is helping to try to get more individuals in our community vaccinated. The Orange County Fair is our super pod in District 2. Eh, and en, it's still en el distrito, open. And it is still open. And we will be open at the Orange County Fair uh, until June 5th. Now it's Thursday, so Thursdays are open until 8. You don't need an appointment. You can just drive up. 
walk in and there's a lot of really courteous staff there to help you to get vaccinated. You can be in and out in about 20 to 30 minutes. There's like a 15 minute observation time. So please help us spread the word. I'm excited to announce uh, uh, some good news. Next slide. Orange County uh, residents in District 2 are, are doing a really good job of getting vaccinated. At the fair, we've already vaccinated 126,000 residents. So we're at about 51% vaccinated uh, residents in District 2. But as you can see by this chart, seniors over 65, they're the big winners, which is a win for all of us because they're our most vulnerable. 80% vaccinated. Great job to our seniors over 65. And so we're working really hard to continue to uh, improve the number of people who have and who want to get vaccinated. None of this is a mandate. It's just you're encouraged to get vaccinated. The vaccine is safe and effective. You can go to the next slide. Um, more than uh, we have a, a vaccine clinic that's happening in Newport on May 26th. We also have vaccine clinics in Stanton, Cyprus, and Los Alamitos. Next slide. Uh, coming up. Now, we've had a lot of talk about um, the safety of the vaccine itself. And I just want to make sure that people understand there's been thousands and thousands of people tested. The vaccine had a unique moment in time when there was a worldwide pandemic. So there were people that were available to participate in the trials all at once across the entire world, which is not normally how our vaccine testing is done. So it is safe and effective out of the, the millions of people, 245 million and counting that have been vaccinated, there have been fewer than 5,000 deaths. That's fewer than the number of people that have died in Orange County from COVID. So um, I think that's an important statistic. We have 3.2 million people in Orange County, more than 5,000 died of COVID-19. And across America, more than 245 million people vaccinated with less than 5,000 people who have died from the, from the vaccine, often related to um, underlying health issues that weren't related to the vaccine necessarily. So we're really working to try to get our community back to normal. And this is our ticket out. Next slide, please. Uh, just an update on our committee appointees. As you can see, we tried to have a diverse uh, representation in District 2 for all of the different committees that District 2 supervisor gets to appoint to. I tried to get someone from all of the cities in the, in the district. And Mayor Pete is our um, Orange County Transportation Authority Special Needs Advisory Committee representative. Thank you, Mayor Pete, for stepping up to do that work. I know that's something that's near and dear to you. Uh, and I, I know I can count on you to make good recommendations to me as to what we need to do to improve our uh, public transportation for our special needs individuals. Um, and then these are my committee assignments. Uh, the chairman uh, saw that i am uh, got a lot of energy and apparently uh, <laughs> felt that I, I had a lot of time. <laughs> so um, there's, a, there's a whole lot of uh, committees, a whole diversity. And I'm learning so much from each of these commissions and from all the different departments. It's, it's really, I'm a lifelong learner anyway, so I'm really enjoying the work if you have an interest in any of these commissions and you'd like to just volunteer and help us out, we'd love to have you. Next slide. You can contact our office here, 714-834-3220. Um, uh, and then our social media is Supervisor Foley on all um, medias. And then also we have our weekly newsletter that we send out on Fridays. We always try to represent the cities in the district and amplify some of your community activities, surveys, anything you're working on that you want us to share. We do that also for our chambers and for our local businesses. We do a business spotlight, a pet of the week. Um, so if you have a community event or something you want to share, please do send it to us and sign up for our newsletter. There's a lot of really helpful information in there. Okay, that's my update. Thank Great. You. Okay. Thank you, Supervisor Foley. I think we're going to jump into the Q&A uh, session now. Um, just jumping right in, what, what are the greatest challenges that the county faces and, and what issues and problems 
are you focusing on in the near term? Yeah, I think that the greatest challenge that we face right now as a county is really we have we just got our budget, the draft budget yesterday, and the surprise for some, I, I was monitoring this for a while as the prior mayor of Costa Mesa, but is that our revenue is up, not down. So that's good news. But our challenge is going to be to sort of how do we per, how do we um, use the dollars that are coming in, both from revenue as well as from uh, the state and federal funding, in a very intentional way to really uh, impact change in Orange County. We have this moment in time where there's literally money flowing into the county for the first time ever um, from the state and feds. And how do we use that that funding very intentionally? What I'm focused on is infrastructure projects, uh, the channel that we've been trying to get improved for many years since like 2016. It's been on the capital improvement project list, uh, water quality projects, anything that's focused on making transportation easier and better for our residents, um, multi-purpose trail systems, improvements to our libraries, our parks, creating more open space and more parkland. So these are my priorities. In addition to, of course, our community health, ending homelessness and housing. Those are, those are the priorities that I'll be focused on. And, you know, I've already talked about my um, economic development initiatives supporting businesses. Thank you. Uh, as we look forward to uh, the June 15th announcement of, uh, from Governor Newsom, uh, what are you expecting uh, them to announce, if, if anything, if you have any insights about what we, the residents can expect to occur on June 15th regarding, I guess, getting back to closer to yeah. normal? Great question. You know, yesterday we moved into the yellow tier, which means that a lot of our businesses, our bars can open up. We can have more indoor capacity for our restaurants. We have uh, more capacity for our theme parks and our sporting events and our concert venues. Uh, Knott's Berry Farm opens tomorrow. And so we are um, expecting June 15th the state to open up. There's been no indication that anything other than that will happen. And so um, if I hear that, I'll be the first to call each of you and all the other mayors in the district uh, to make sure that you know um, if something has changed, because I'll be very disappointed if that's the case. (laughs) But as far as I know, we're on track to open up June 15th. And you can see California is leading the way in terms of vaccinating our community. Orange County is doing an excellent job more than two, well, almost 2 million, sorry, almost 2 million people in Orange County out of our 3.2 million residents have already had their first shot. So we're getting there. Thank you. That, that, so that question was focused on the state, um, you know, from a county level, given that the CDC uh, has issued guidance that people who are fully vaccinated don't need to wear masks anymore or socially distance indoors or outdoors. When do you see the county relaxing its COVID protocols? Well, the CDC guidance isn't quite that um, broad. So the CDC guidance had a lot of caveats that nobody really paid attention to. Um, So the the guidance was that if you're fully vaccinated and people around you are fully vaccinated, you don't need to wear your mask. Um, Because really at this point, the mask is to protect somebody who's not vaccinated. Um, And so... But if you're in a crowd of people where you don't know the individuals, you don't know if they're vaccinated, then the recommendation is still to wear your mask unless you're just outside socially distanced. It's not any big deal. Um, We're still in California under the state California Department of Health guidance, as well as the Orange County Department of Health guidance, which is that you have to still wear your mask indoors. Uh, Employers still need to uh, have masks for employees uh, especially in restaurants. Um, and uh, so that'll, ha- that'll stay the, you know, the rule until uh, June 15th. But what I'm saying to people is let's, you know, use common sense. I mean, I uh, continue to wear my mask if I am out in a big crowd, which I'm excited to get out in a big crowd again. <laughs> um, but 
you know, I went, I had a little event last night at a local restaurant. Everybody on at the event was vaccinated and none of us wore our masks. So let's just use common sense. The mask is actually going to help us in the flu season too. I mean, now that people are kind of used to wearing masks, I think we're going to see less flu. But June 15th, the state opens up, the mask mandate is re- released. It's just a couple weeks away. Let's just have some patience and get there. <laughs> Can't wait. Uh, there's a lot of debate uh, on the national level about the proof of vaccination or something you know, people are calling a vaccination passport. Do you see anything like that uh, being implemented in California or in Orange County? Yeah, well, um, that's been a topic of discussion at our board meetings, as you've probably been following. And prior to my arrival onto the board in March, the county had already had a contract in place to do a digital vaccine record with a QR code. And that was already um, something that they had planned. And then um, for whatever reason, people got very upset about this. A small number of people, I will say, Um, and were, I think, concerned that it was a mandate. And I just want to make sure everyone knows there has never been a mandate for vaccines. Nobody's mandating anyone. It's just a strong encouragement because it'll help us to be healthy and move forward. Um, But uh, the digital record was, was intended to be a HIPAA compliant, private medical digital record as a convenient uh, option for consumers. It it was never to be a mandate of any kind. And it really wasn't gonna focus on like grocery store or something like that. That was a kind of misinformation campaign. It was intended for uh, if you wanna travel to a foreign country, right now, Europe and other countries are starting to require digital proof of vaccination. And you're going to have to figure out how to get that. It's not going to come from the county, but you will have to figure out how to obtain a digital vaccine record. And then there's also, you know, university system requiring it. Um, Sporting events like the Dodgers have required a digital record. There's a lot of uh, venues that are starting to require this. L.A. is doing digital records. So this is a um, easy consumer uh, option, but we're not doing it in Orange County right now. Thank you. So reopening the um, tourism, sports, and entertainment industries is obviously critical for our local economy. Uh, do you see events like the Orange County Fair uh, and community level celebrations being able to reopen in the summer? Um, and also, you know, similar uh, uh, regarding professional sports. Um, and what capacities will apply, if any, uh, during the summer? Yes. And, you know, I live around the corner from the Orange County Fair and Event Center. So our family, we go to the fair nearly every single day. It's just kind of our nighttime outing. Um, we buy normally when you can. This year you can't. We buy a super pass. This year we'll just buy tickets. Um, but uh, the fair opens July 16th. And it runs for the month of July and into the first two weeks of August. So, yes, the fair is back and uh, you can buy tickets right now. You have to buy tickets in advance. They're not doing the option of buying tickets at the fairgrounds. So go online to the OC Fair and Event Center and buy your tickets. And then. Oh, you're muted, Supervisor Foley. Hmm. Okay, sorry about that. Also, we have uh, uh, exciting news. You know, I mentioned that Knott's Berry Farm is opening. Uh, They open tomorrow. Disneyland is open. There's a lot of events and event centers that are opening. The Orange County Performing Arts Center is opening. There's just uh, professional sports are playing. Baseball started last week. Uh, And so we're, we're back on our way to, to something normal. Great. Thank you. You uh, mentioned uh, it in your uh, opening comments uh, the flow of resources from uh, the state and federal government. Do you have any uh, specifics uh, that you're aware of or that you can share with the residents about uh, that will be available to help the county get back and up and running? Yes. Yeah, so each city, you should have received your 
uh, American Rescue Plan funds, I think today or yesterday, uh, depending on which city you are. Um, but each city was allocated uh, some American Rescue Plan funds. And we actually have those allocations on our website. It's in the um, one of our first newsletters. We have a listing of all the allocations. So that money is in already and the cities will have the discretion to do uh, different things with that money. A lot of the cities are using it, as I understand, for revenue uh, replacement, um, helping to get recover from the, the loss of revenue during the pandemic. And then the county received $661 million in uh, revenue from, the, not revenue, but funding <laughs> from the uh, American Rescue Plan. Now that comes in two different tranches. The first tranche we received this week, and that's for about 331 million. And we are working on how we allocate that. We've decided on an allocation of less than 100 million of it already. Uh, we have 10 million going to arts grants for businesses that are arts related or nonprofits that are arts related. Each district, uh, I'm sorry, 5 million. Each district received a million dollars for that. And we will be prioritizing our arts grant funding for um, supporting uh, music and, and live entertainment in restaurants in the district. So send us your list of uh, venues that offer music and live entertainment so we can help uh, support those musicians as well as the restaurants that I think it's a good synergy there. We're also going to be using our grants funding for supporting cultural dance um, studios and organizations. They really got hammered during the pandemic and we want to make sure that they can pay the rent and so we're going to be doing that. I'm a dancer from when I was a girl and so I have an affinity for uh, dance studios. Uh, you know, my mom cleaned the ballet studio so that I could take ballet dances, dance lessons. And so I know how uh, those dance studios have really been hit hard. Then we're also going to be supporting our, you know, our major non nonprofits, performing arts, theaters and the like with some grants as well. And the grants will be $20,000 each. Then we have a food uh, the board voted on uh, a food gap meal replacement uh, program. Our team did a survey of District 2 residents, nonprofits, and veterans to try to determine what is the need in terms of food and meal replacement. And we're really trying to be intentional with those dollars. We don't want to just send money out. We want to make sure that it's going directly to benefit a need. And so I've um, been inquired and we've been told it's allowed. We're also going to be, it's more going to be like groceries. So we're including um, medical supplies, incontinence supplies, diapers for families in need, that kind of thing, not just, uh, you know, milk and, and eggs. So pay uh, some of that will, the announcement about those programs will follow in the next few weeks. And then the county, we're all discussing over the next month, how do we allocate the rest of the money internally? Um, how do we get it out into the community? My preference is to give the people back their money. And uh, so my preference is to get the money back out into the community, to local businesses, uh, to families that are struggling, to help people pay the rent for commercial tenants. So that's what I'll be pushing for. Great, thank you. Uh, Supervisor Foley, reopening of schools for the fall year full-time is critical, obviously for a great number of reasons. Um, what's your view on reopening schools full-time uh, for in-person education? Yeah, I think we're moving in that direction. You know, each school district is different. Uh, my husband's a teacher. He's been back to the classroom since the fall. Uh, and so it just depends on the school district. But we're definitely moving in that direction. Kids need to get back to school. Um, we need to get back to school for more than just, you know, reading and writing and arithmetic. We need to get back to school for the social development, for the mental health and wellness of our kids and our families. 
Um, and we need to get back out of our families. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we just, you know, we need to move into the next phase uh, post pandemic and get everybody back to school. My uh, son at UCSB is his summer is online, but they've said they're going back in person in the fall. So we're going to get there. I, I'm confident we're going to get there. Along those lines, you know, distance learning has impacted uh, families and students in different ways. Do, are you aware of any programs uh, or projects to help students and families that have fallen, maybe fallen behind uh, in their distance learning program to catch up? Yeah, you know, I was on a call this morning with the uh, United Way and their Women's Philanthropy Fund. And they've been partnering with schools and school districts to really supplement uh, some of the work that the teachers are doing and that the teachers have identified uh, as needed. So that's, some, that's an area that I really care about. And we're still dry, trying to drill down on what's the need and how can we support it. Um, we do have some programs on our agenda for Tuesday's board meeting uh, for funding to help support school districts in terms of mental health services, um, social services. I think they're kind of interconnected at this moment in time. Um, but in terms of like the academic enrichment programs, those are coming more from the school district than from the county per se. Okay. Thank you. We've, uh, we've seen a, a recent return to sports. My kids, for example, are, are playing sports right now, which is great. Uh, is that return to sports something that you were in favor of? Or, or if so, why or why not? Um, yeah, return to sports is great. You know, I had two sons that played basketball, football, golf. My husband is the golf coach at Costa Mesa High School, and his team has been, you know, back in play. In fact, they have league finals, I think. Uh, it might be in Los Alamitos this year. I'm not sure. But um, so return to sports is, again, it's one of those critical pieces of the puzzle in getting us back to something normal. Um, in Costa Mesa, when I was mayor, we actually had returned uh, to sports pretty early, um, like in the fall uh, for with social distancing and whatnot, but we had flag football for our community youth organization sports. We had soccer, uh, we had baseball, you know, little league. So we had already returned a little bit. Now we're seeing, you know, now there's games. And you know, I noticed that uh, on my son's, you know, little alumni Facebook page, the basketball team's doing senior night and whatnot. So this is all good for all of us. Let's get more people vaccinated. We could do more things. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. And as we've talked about a little bit, you know, the county has now moved into the or to the yellow tier, and uh, which means you know businesses can have larger um, attendance and things like that. Uh, is there any thought, or have you heard anything about the fact that the maybe after the governor's announcement that the colored tier system will go away and be replaced with some other form of guidance? No, I haven't heard that. But again, as soon as we hear something like that, we will let all the mayors know in the district. What I've heard is June 15th, the, the state opens up and we're um, returned to, you know, normal giving guidance to those individuals who are immune compromised, who might have health reasons that would prevent them from getting the vaccine or for personal reasons, they don't choose to get the vaccine that we encourage people to continue to wear a mask if you're in a crowded place. And that's gonna be a personal choice for people, you know? Thank you. And uh, so in recent reports, I, I noticed there's been some, uh, some days where there's zero COVID related deaths in all of Orange County, which is excellent. Um, and it's some, some are saying the pandemic is over, I, I, although I don't think it's that simple and, and I don't think you would probably not say that either. Uh, but what do you what do you think the long term changes um, are, uh, which are here to stay as a result of the pandemic? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, the pandemic is definitely not over um, because we still have people testing positive for COVID. Plus, we have to worry about the variants. And as more people start to travel internationally to places where they have a variant that we don't have here, then we're going to be exposed to that as well. So that's something that we're gonna to have to uh, 
address moving forward. Uh, of course, the booster for the vaccine is going to be a critical um, community health tool for us to address the variants uh, in the future. And then also we have, um, I think what we're seeing in terms of the, the business industry and, and changes in the structure of how people do business is a lot of large corporations had sent everyone home to, to Zoom land. <laughs> and, and some people want to continue like on Zoom and not travel to LA for meetings and whatnot, or not have to travel across the country. Others are going to continue to have offices. But what I've been hearing from our commercial uh, uh, property owners and managers is that there's definitely a reduction in the number of office space units that are going to be needed in the future. So we're going to have to start talking about how do we pivot to utilizing and repurposing those spaces if people are no longer going to need huge office buildings. Uh, so that's, you know, those are discussions we'll continue to have. Um, certainly, again, like I said before, during flu season, or if we see a spike up in a variant, then probably you're going to start to hear health officers talk about, you know, get your mask out. I could anticipate that. Um, but I'm hoping that uh, the vaccine is the way that we manage this pandemic, just like in other times, polio, measles, whooping cough, uh, you know, all kinds of other uh, diseases that we address through vaccine. Thank you. So one of the uh, big challenges that, that you're well aware of in the county is homelessness. And uh, I'm assuming that there will be some of that $661 million allocated to that. Do you have any, any thoughts or any, any programs that are uh, underway or germinating on how so, we can continue to address this? So I am one of the, I think, uh, surprising educational moments for me uh, when I started this job was to learn about the hundreds of millions, I'm not talking tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars that are going towards ending homelessness, housing, uh, treatment services. Um, in the last three meetings, I think I've voted on nearly $400 million in contracts. Um, and so uh, to me, it's not about throwing more money at the problem. That's what I've come to realize. Uh, and so our office is doing a 360 review of the uh, homeless services, housing, treatment, uh, and the like in District 2. And we're looking at what, what's being offered, um, how many people is it serving, what uh, is the cost, what's the metric for success, and are we meeting those metrics? And if we don't have all those categories addressed, then we're going to be making recommendations for change. So you'll be hearing more about that. I have an advisor coming on that's going to be addressing homelessness and housing and treatment. Um, and this is a priority for me because we're throwing a lot of money at this issue. So we need to make sure that that money is being um, well spent and is intentional to have success. Thank you. The, the next question is, is related to that, uh, Supervisor Foley. The um, North Orange County Service Provider Area, or SPA, has a significant number of shelter beds uh, for emergency shelter for people in need. Uh, but there's a real need for the development of permanent supportive housing to provide a, a place to transition from a shelter back into the community. What, what can or is the county doing to help create more permanent supportive housing? And that is part of our 360 review, but I can tell you there's a lot happening. City of Stanton is doing an incredible job. I know they're not in this group here today, but they are actually doing an incredible job in terms of converting old city motels into permanent supportive housing and building, a, I just was briefed on a, a hundred unit affordable housing development that they have. And they're converting what is a degraded area and improving it and providing housing. 
Stanton is, is actually experiencing a bit of a renaissance. It's really exciting. Um, it's going to be unrecognizable, I think, in the next five years. Uh, and it's going to have a lot of affordable housing. It's going to be have a quality community with affordable housing. So it can be done. Um, we have uh, a lot of funding coming in from both the state and the federal government to support building affordable housing. So we just have to decide where, what does that look like? Does that mean we build, we convert motels? Uh, I think that we should. I think we should try to do that because we have a lot of CD motels in District 2 <laughs> that we could convert and we could make into more quality housing. Um, and, but, but we also need to look at seniors. Where are we um, helping for seniors who might own their homes and they live there for a long time? but they can't move anywhere. All of their services are near them. All of their family and their support and their friends are right near them. And there's no place for them to move because houses in all of these cities in our district are selling for a million dollars, a house that might have sold when they bought it for 10,000, you know? <laughs> and so we are, um, we're in this situation where people are property rich, cash poor, and they have no place to go. So we need to also look at what do we do for our seniors? And then that creates some opportunity for inventory for families in the next generation. So these are all um, issues that I'm hoping to bring the mayors together in district two to have a collaborative conversation around and create some recommendations what, that we can work together on. Thank you, Supervisor Foley. Uh, Mayor Pete, I do not see any additional questions through um, the Zoom app. Um, I think we can wrap it up unless you, you see any on your end. No, we have. I, I see no questions. I, uh, I, you know, I'm very interested in what you find, you know, your, your working group on the homelessness because I participate in the uh, uh, Kramer, Bridges at Kramer Place Advisory Board and, uh, you know, that hear constantly the, of the, what the needs are and so look forward to that. Uh, yeah. Wondering if you can accelerate the construction on the 405 it's uh, it's interesting to drive the 405 at this time, but uh, we greatly appreciate your time. If you have any uh, final thoughts you'd like to share with us, um, we, we really appreciate you coming on today. Well, thank you. And um, I want to compliment uh, Cypress, Los Alamitos, and La Palma. Um, La Palma is not on the call, but doing a great job in terms of vaccinating the community that uh, your communities have some of the highest rates of um, residents vaccinated and we'll be out with our mobile unit helping you to vaccinate more individuals. There was a question in the chat. I want to make sure that they respond. We're going to be bringing our mobile unit to you. We also will have constituent services uh, mobile here as we are allowed to get out and open up. Um, you'll start to see our constituent services team out helping. Um, your area is represented by Calvin Alvarez, and he's our constituent services manager who is there to help and serve. And whatever we can do to partner, please do join us. Um, we are really all about service to the community and making sure that we can support the cities in a meaningful way. So thank you for including us today in this conversation. And I look forward to future conversations in person. <laughs> thank you, right, thank thank you, you very again, much. Supervisor Foley. And just to announce the uh, next West o City, OC Cities uh, virtual town hall will be on June 9th at noon and will feature Senator Tom Umberg. So please join us as well for that virtual event. Thanks again, Supervisor Foley. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.